Welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to talk about a controversial word that is used in Japan. Some people are offended by it and some people are not. That word is... The word is gaijin. Some people don't like the word, some people think it's very derogatory or non-inclusive and other people, like myself, just think it's a word. So I want to break it down a little bit today and look at the historical content of it and uh, how it came about and why some people think it's derogatory. So what does gaijin mean? It basically means outside person or foreigner. Uh, it was coined in the early days of modern Japan after the Meiji Restoration period in 1857 and 200 years prior Japan was pretty much closed off to the entire world except for one trade ship that would come through from Portugal once a year bringing linens, uh, spices etc and other goods that they were able to sell and trade here. After more and more foreigners started coming into the country the Japanese needed a term that would show the distinctness between Japanese and foreign people or non-Japanese people and the coin gaijin was termed. Now over the years it's been used controversially by some and uh, just lightheartedly by others. The cultural context basically it's, a, it's just a label and it's how Japan views itself as a homogenous society. I've been in Japan 25 years, 25 years next week actually, October 7th next week. Not bad for a guy who came for just a year or two to experience Japanese culture and then had the every intention to go back to the UK. Yeah, overall, some people are offended by it. And last week I saw a video, hence the reason why I want to make this video today. I saw a video of a guy in Japan. He mentioned the word gaijin was used a couple of times. He was not offended by it, but other people were, including some Japanese people. They didn't like their own people using the, the word. He asked in the video, what do you think of the word gaijin? Let me know in the comments. And I was the first person to answer. I said some people are offended by it and others like myself are clearly not using the name in my YouTube name. So I got a few comments under that uh, from people who were offended but ironically have never been to Japan or have very little interest in Japan. Uh, one young lady said uh, I'm wrong, she, well basically her words were you're wrong, it's a very offensive word. When I asked her to elaborate she could not or she refused to and another person said my opinion was wrong and that I should not be supporting such a derogatory term and I, one person even said I was in Japan in 1981 for two weeks and I didn't like the fact that Japanese salarymen had to work so late at night so you base the whole experience of Japan in a two-week vacation okay in 1981 so am I concerned about not being accepted as one of them? Not at all. I know I'm not Japanese. I'm very proud to be British. Um, my, my blood is 100% Irish. I'm very proud of that. I was born in London to Irish parents. And yeah, I'm very proud of my heritage and I don't want to ever give that up. I've lived in Japan so long because I enjoy the lifestyle here. It's great in the UK too, don't get me wrong, I, I love the UK and I do miss it a lot. But the sense of safety here is just paramount to none. I think Japan ranks somewhere in the top seven safest countries in the world. and It's extremely safe here. So I, when, I, when I hear con certain other countries are a lot safer, I kind of makes me wonder how much safer can they possibly be and Japanese people are very honest I've left my phone on the train uh, end up in Hiroshima I've left my wallet on the train I've left uh, my iPad on the Shinkansen and I got everything back nothing was taken no money was taken no, no cards nothing um, so there is a sense of community here, and I really enjoy that aspect of it and in that respect I don't feel like an outsider. Uh, so as a tourist you may have a different perspective because you may basically see it as a novelty. Uh, if you go to a restaurant for example and the waiter or waitress says uh, would you like a gaijin menu? They don't mean anything bad by that they're just basically saying would you like a menu that you can actually read 
because most menus are going to be in Japanese. And if you've learned some Japanese over the years and you can read a menu, a very basic thing, great. Uh, it's going to help you and benefit you a lot. And you just need to learn a few phrases, uh, you know, konnichiwa, uh, arigato gozaimasu, and hai so desu, uh, if you understand the question. The way Gaijin is used also reflects Japanese perceptions of foreigners. Uh, sometimes it's associated with uh, curiosity and interest in other cultures. And I have a lot of kids that will run up to me, uh, especially my my uh, two boys at their kindergarten. Kids will come to me and say, Anata wa gaijin desu ne. And you know, they're just basically asking, you're a foreigner. And they don't know the difference. They don't know there's no um, derogatory meaning behind it. But the parents are teaching them that there is because the, sometimes the moms will say, Ah, gaijin jai, gai kokujin, gai kokujin. And I'm saying, ah, it's fine, it's fine, daijo, daijo, and you know, it's basically, it's okay, I'm not offended. There are uh, other times it's linked to a stereotype, uh, of both positive and negative, and about how non-Japanese people behave. So, for example, we've seen uh, in recent years, there was the British guy uh, who was here on vacation, and he took off his clothes and jumped into the moat around the Royal Palace, uh, there were some American explorers, young guys, explorers. Um, they decided it would be perfectly fine to ride an electric scooter through a crowd of people at a shrine or temple and uh, do parkour off the slanted walls, um, of none of which is acceptable here. Um, it, it's, you know, when, when you come to a, uh, when you go to a foreign country, you, if you don't know the local rules and customs you need to learn you need to know what they are because you're not going to get treated the same here and if you break the law you will feel the law so don't do it so stereotypes can be seen as friendly and outgoing to uh, being unruly and unsociable as I just mentioned with those people now the guy who jumped into the moat I think he had some kind of um, there was something not quite right and uh, basically uh, I believe his family apologized and uh, he left the country with that incident after that. So what is the future of the term gaijin in Japan? Well look, I'm not going to stop using the word. The younger generations are more likely going to use it as a term that is not seen as derogatory. Things change over time. In the 25 years that I've been here, Japan has changed a lot. So we're seeing more western style housing. Uh, for example, in a lot of European house designs. And so we're seeing a lot more of that uh, influence coming from the West. Younger generation is more influenced by what they see on the internet and on TV and in movies, etc. Like I say, things have changed a lot. Tattoos. Tattoos. Many people still frown upon tattoos as being associated with uh, gangs or being a, a gangster like the Yakuza. Um, However, that is slowly changing and it's got to a point now where a lot more people are accepting of tattoos as works of art or a personal, it's a personal thing. A tattoo is a personal thing, just like having an earring or a nose ring or your tongue pierced. So a tattoo is more of a personal thing now and, and more people are seeing tattoos as a personal thing that you have on your body and not an association. So will it ever lose its outsider connotation uh, is an open question. What are your thoughts on the word gaijin? Have you experienced it personally if you live in Japan or you've, if you've been to Japan? Or is it something that makes you feel connected or disconnected from Japan? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.